Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. Testing. Today we're going to be talking all about testing and test strategies. So if you're doing the Cloud Resume Challenge, you're probably doing so because you actually want to end up landing a job at some point. Now, a lot of companies will care a lot about testing and they're going to ask you questions about testing as part of the interview process. So it really helps if you've got an understanding of the different types of testing. So when they ask you questions about like, how would you test this? Or how would you think about testing something else that you have the answers for those questions. So where we'll start is actually by looking at some theory. And then what we'll do is I'll run through that theory as quickly as I can with you. And then we'll get into and actually show you some code. And what we'll do there is we'll create some integration tests for an HTTP API that we have set up and also some end-to-end -end tests and talk a little bit about additional test frameworks and things and additional things for you to look into as well. Okay, so types of testing. Which types of testing do we have and how do you choose between those different testing types? So when it comes to testing types, what you'll often see talked about, and you can have a go Googling this after this video, is this thing, which is a test pyramid. So basically along this axis up here, along the Y axis, what we have is value, but along with value, we also get brittleness. And we'll talk about this in a second. And then this one down here, this is just sort of volume or amount, number of. Down this end, we have unit tests. And then as we go further up, we have things like component tests. We have integration tests, or what would be known as UI testing, or maybe even end-to-end uh, -end testing. So what we want is we want lots of these tests down here, these unit tests, because they are generally they're faster, they're quicker, they're more reliable, they run uh, the same every time. And then we want less and less as we go higher up. So we want uh, quite a lots of these. We want some of these and maybe just a few of these types of tests. OK, so that goes through some of the theory. But what, what does this look, stuff look like in practice? Let's actually have a look into this code now and have a look at how some of these uh, testing practices and layers can be implemented in actual code. So if we take a look here, so what I've done for my integration test is I've done something very simple, as simple as I can as you cost possibly imagine. In this case, it's look here, we've got five lines of code. So let me break this down. In fact, let me, let's quickly recap actually how our API works. So let me zoom this in as well. So this is our API, which is getting user values or user counts on our web page. Now, if I refresh this, it probably will go up because I think I've been adding to this value. So we've got 23 here. So this is a response from our API component that we want to test. So what we want to do is we are going to, we're going to call that URL. So we're going to call the API and then we're going to do that using curl, which is a command line utility, which is for call URL. Uh, minus S is just in silent mode. We're going to call our domain name and we're going to then use jq which is a query for json json is just this syntax here that we're returning from our api and we're going to say grab that count property which is basically grab the 23 value and then we're going to store that in a variable then we're going to curl again but this time we're going to add to the value so we're going to call our api which is adding or incrementing to that count uh, which in turn should uh, should increase that value right and then secondly, what we're doing is we're going to do the exact same call as we did just before. And then we're going to store that into a second variable. So now we have a snapshot in time of the API at some point, and then we've increased it. And then we've got a snapshot again in the second point. And then this is where our test part comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to check is the first part or is the first request less than the second? Very simple test. Basically, what this thing is going to do, right, is going to test that get a endpoint. So it's going to check whether we can retrieve values, which we obviously can if we're going to get the number back. It's going to check whether that sending, that put function, is also adding to our value. And then it's going to check again whether we can retrieve from it. So we're actually covering off a huge portion of our test coverage for this particular application. It's a very simple application, but it just show, it goes to show you that you can traverse and cover quite a lot of the uh, cover a lot of the code in just a simple integration test. Now. I deliberately did this in a very simple way, adding it into our make file here so that it was only five lines. The reason that I did that is to show you that you really don't have to overthink this kind of stuff. You can add some very high value tests in very small amounts of code. But let me show you as well, for instance, a different library. So this is a library I've used a lot called SuperTest. Uh, it depends on which language that you're using. There are going to be different libraries and different packages that you can do for writing different, uh, different aspects of your test. And SuperTest is basically a library for doing, HTTP, for doing HTTP API testing, similar to what we've done with curl, but it's just, it just has a bunch of help wrappers around it, some niceties. Let me show you how it works. 
And this is basically how it works. So it is a node module that you install and then you set up an application or a URL. You make a request to that URL and then you can make some assertions on the response. So you can expect things like the content type headers to be JSON, the content type, uh, content length to be 15 and expect the, the status response to be 200. So we can, we can dig into that and add a lot more assertions and it's just a little bit nicer. Obviously what we've got here uh, in this test itself is quite crude, but quite crude, but very simple. This will run on pretty much any Linux machine as well. And obviously over here, we have to install Node and NPM, etc. So trying to just avoid that to keep things simple within our integration tests. So that covers off integration tests. Let's have a look now at end-to-end -end tests. So I've got an end-to-end -end test set up as well. And let's jump in and have a look at that. In fact, again, before we have a, a test, let's have a reminder of what our application looks like. So this is our application uh, or our resume. And the important part is down here. So we've got a visit account, visit account 23. So if I go ahead and refresh this, uh, pick a language apparently, uh, and you will see the visit account goes up and now we're at 24. You can see that at the bottom of the screen. Now, if I refresh that a number of times, we can see that visit account going up. So for our end-to-end -end test, what we want to do is we want to grab this page and we want to check this value. So what that's going to do is going to check, does our website return on the domain that we expect it? Does our count appear exactly where we expect it? Does our API work? So this end-to-end -end test is covering a lot of our app and a lot of our infrastructure. It's covering the back end and the front end. So let me show you how that works in, in some code as well. So because if you see here, when I do a refresh on this page, you see there's a little momentary blip before that visitor count increases, right? There's a little pause in time. Why? Because the way that we've implemented this is on the page, we have some JavaScript code that's calling off to our API. And that's basically making the page dynamic. But what that means is if we are to download this page, when it first arrives back to us as a user, it doesn't have that visitor count in it. So when it comes to testing, we can't just download this file and test the file. We have to test the file as if it's a browser. We have to have the sort of JavaScript environment uh, set up for us. So the way that we're going to do that and emulate that in this case is using this library here called Puppeteer. Now, what is Puppeteer? Puppeteer is basically a, it's called a headless, headless Chrome tool. So let me show you the repo. This is what it looks like. It's a headless Chrome tool. What is headless? Headless basically means without the user interface. So Chrome, which is like your web browser, you might use Safari, you might use Edge or IE. Uh, but here, what we've got is a headless Chrome browser. That's the browser here, the browser application, but without the UI part. So that allows us to do things with our browser, but through automation. Now, if we go back in and have a look at this end-to-end -end test, what you'll see here is we are basically setting up a browser. This is it within automation now. We're setting up a page. We're making a request to our website. And then we're doing a bit of a pause. We're sleeping for a little bit of time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reach into that page after we've waited for what here is two seconds. We're going to reach into that page and grab some HTML. And we're going to check the count value. And then basically, similar to before, if there is no count value or if we can't find it, then we're going to throw an error. And if not, we're going to just console log that we've passed, the test has passed. So again, like a very short test, uh, very simple, but it's providing high value. Before, before we had these tests, we had absolutely no way of knowing whether our application worked or not. We would deploy it and then just hope or we would go and manually start touching things. But in this case, we can actually then see through automation whether or not our application is working correctly. Now, what we've done also here, let me show you in the code, is also add this into our CI CD pipeline. So in a previous video, we went through and set this up where we were setting up GitHub Actions and setting up our workflows. And if I just scroll down here, we see we've got two new steps here, integration test, backend, and end-to-end -end tests. It's a little bit harder to see them within the code. So let's have a look in the GitHub interface, which is a little bit friendlier. If I go into my action steps and have a look here at the latest run, and now what you see is you've got two sort of swim lanes. We've got deploy front end and we've got this one here for back end. And this is all of our sort of workflow as we go piece by piece, all of these four. So we've got our unit tests that are running first and they're running and they're quite quick. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to build and deploy all of our infrastructure. So all of our back end. And then we're going to start running the test that I've just shown you. So if you jump in here and have a quick look at the integration test and have a look at the logs, what we'll basically see is here, look, so we're saying, we're comparing if the first count, so if the first call to the API, which is 18, is less than the second count, which is 19, obviously it's incremented there. And then that's all our integration test is doing. If we go back and have a look as well at end-to-end -end test, and then look at the logs here. 
let's have a look. And then here's our logs here. So we're loading up our website and we're waiting for API calls to be made. That's that two second wait time. And then we're gonna get our page element, which in this case was 20 was the count value. And at that point it's test pass because we found a count value on our page. The page is up, the API is working, everything is great. Uh, which basically means the sum total of our whole pipeline is now passed. So that's it. That's kind of like a whirlwind tour of testing. Let me quickly just show you a few of the libraries as well. So Puppeteer itself is not strictly necessarily used for testing. You can use it for testing. Um, there are some libraries that are built on top of Puppeteer uh, that give you some extra niceties as well. For instance, you've got Cypress. So Cypress is quite a common uh, test framework that you can have a look at. And then also you've got Selenium as well, which is Java based uh, and different test framework. I'm not a massive fan of it personally, but it's definitely very popular in the industry. So it might be one that you want to have a look at and have an experiment with uh, different, just a different test framework that you can get up and running with. So I hope that really helped you understand a little bit more about how testing and test strategy might work. So we went through a bit of the theory and understood some of that the stuff about the test pyramid and how you ultimately want to be writing a lot more fast, quick, reliable tests like your unit tests, and then less or not as many integration tests and even fewer end-to-end -end tests. And what I'm hoping now is that gives you a bit more confidence in understanding those test types. If you go into an interview, for instance, to be able to answer questions about like, how would you test this type of component? So as always, get hands on. That's all for this video and I will speak to you next time.